Surely I'm not the only one who's noticed something I previously thought unimaginable. A real lack of excitement around E3. Two weeks away, conversations should have skyrocketed, social media would be full of theories and speculation. But not this time. It's a real shame because ever since I tuned into my first press conference in 2009 and I discovered the magical vibe that characterizes these shows, E3 was the event every year that I'd most look forward to. However, now even I can't help but feel similarly. On one hand, I tell myself not to feel guilty about it because it's justified. Sony's disappointing decision not to show up is obviously the big reason, which not only means many of my most anticipated games, but arguably the deliverer of the most entertaining presentations this generation will be absent. EA is skipping the event too, and granted, while their recent shows I could only call downright awful, I still watch them by default, hoping to discover that one small gem, like A Way Out or Sea of Solitude were. Combined with the fact that E3's news value has been on the decline already, now that most of the big reveals are purposefully teased in the weeks leading up to the big stage shows, and the significance of this year's edition seems smaller than it's ever been. On the other hand, I realize I'm also in the wrong, knowing full well that there are still other parties excited to show us what they've been working on, and one in particular for which the pressure is on. Microsoft will want to prove Xbox's commitment to remain a major player, which concretely means it is bound to reveal what the next console is gonna bring. There isn't a doubt in my mind, the road to PS5 was teased by Sony last month because it knew that if the next Xbox would begin right here. As a gamer, how could you not get excited about that? In this video we will take a look ahead. I'll discuss my expectations for every publisher, from the games we already know, to predictions for stuff that we can't know about just yet. From the platform holders like Microsoft and Nintendo, to the third party publishers like Ubisoft, Bethesda and Square Enix. Lastly, despite both EA and Sony's sabbatical, there is of course a lot to speculate about what this will mean for these publishers respectively moving forward. One thing is certain, it's gonna be a strange E3. A bang in a large void. Stakes are sky high for Microsoft and I can only imagine what Phil Spencer must be thinking right now. This is it. After what has frankly been a failed generation that started with stupid corporate decisions and ended with a total lack of first party support, now is the moment for a clean slate. You have to understand, Microsoft has built up to this opportunity for years. They've reversed every mistake made at Xbox One's launch, introduced new online services that could pan out to be great ideas but need time to grow, and finally they acquired a bunch of studios to provide exclusive content. But that road has been slow and therefore painful. Now it can finally start from scratch and most importantly do it right this time. All eyes will be peeled at Microsoft this E3, now that PlayStation chose to abandon the scene. I think this can only mean one thing, we're in for a monumental show. Microsoft simply cannot afford to drop the ball anymore now. First of all, the next Xbox is undoubtedly getting revealed. The big question being, how in depth will Microsoft go as far as sharing details about it? I think the answer will fully depend on the launch window that they have in mind. There are two possible scenarios. They could either go with the fall of 2020, presumably alongside the PlayStation 5. This means that another E3 is yet to come up next year, allowing them more time before announcing things like the launch date and price. Doing so is certainly the likely tactic, but then again, Microsoft has enough purpose to want to surprise. They could choose to strategically launch the next Xbox early on in the year, which would force PlayStation to join along or else be left in the dust for a significant time. If that were the case, we'll definitely hear a specific release window other than a simple 2020 and with a bit of luck we might even get a prize. Now, getting that concrete price is everything, as it would indicate how strong the next Xbox should be. Here's the thing, current rumors suggest that Microsoft is planning to release two separate versions of the next Xbox, and I think that's a very smart move. It allows them to offer both a model that's significantly more powerful than the PS5, and thus they get to keep boasting about having the most powerful console, while simultaneously offering the mainstream gamer a cheap alternative to dive along into next gen. 
One of Xbox's biggest focus points has been accessibility, by making games playable on both PC and console, by offering backwards compatibility for their games, and by promising cross-gen support moving forward. Separate models of the next Xbox is the natural next step in the process, and I wouldn't underestimate how clever this direction can be. If they can finally also offer the worthwhile content, then Sony is practically forced to follow suit or else lose part of its market share. Apart from these unique offerings, I think you'll find many of Microsoft's talking points to resemble what we heard about the PS5 already. Obviously, the graphical capabilities are to be shown off, and you're gonna hear about much faster load times in the same vein. After all, an SSD is rumored to be built into the next Xbox too. But the hardware is only half of it. Where Microsoft is forced to step up its game is in first-party software, and I really hope that all those studio acquisitions can finally bear fruit this E3. We might very well see a similar approach to the one that Sony took at E3 2016. Because no matter how far the current projects are in development, Microsoft will want to show off what it can, just to make us aware that games, exciting games, are finally coming. Personally, my most anticipated reveal is the new IP from Santa Monica-based studio The Initiative. It's a team that was formed not too long ago, but the ambition is clear. Led by Daryl Gallagher, previously the studio head of Crystal Dynamics, The Initiative aims to become the equivalent of a Naughty Dog or Sony Santa Monica for Microsoft. The company has been on a hiring spree as of late, stealing talent from these before-mentioned studios and many more. I suspect that we'll get a small teaser trailer for a high-budget, story-driven action-adventure title, precisely the type of game that Xbox currently needs and that'll be right up my alley. Playground Games, responsible for the very successful Forza Horizon series, is working on their first open-world RPG, rumored to be taking place in the Fable universe. First reports came in January of last year, so by now, an announcement definitely seems plausible. And last up is Ninja Theory's next game, and as a massive fan of Hellblade, I am of course thrilled to see what they do next. Last month, word struck us that it's a 4-player co-op game, which initially I received as underwhelming news, but apparently it's still very story-driven and should include some amazing boss fights. Hellblade is soon turning 2 years old, so this new game should be the furthest project along, making the suggested early 2020 release date seem valid. Now, next to these mysterious reveals, there's a lot we already know we're gonna see for sure. That includes Halo Infinite, which according to rumors could be the highest budget game we've ever seen. It also includes Gears 5, coming later this year so we'll obviously see more, and it includes Ori and the Will of the Wisps, the highly anticipated sequel to one of Xbox's best received games. But aside from a plethora of first party showings, Microsoft possesses another golden opportunity here. With Sony missing from the stage, Microsoft will get the keys to every possible third-party announcement as well, including those of EA. You see, EA may not do a press conference themselves, but they're gonna want to show off games like Jedi Fallen Order, or maybe some skateboarding title desperately begged for. Yeah, I'm not even gonna pretend that dream actually still exists. But no, seriously, I'll name a few. What about Square Enix's Avengers game? How about Rocksteady's long-awaited new project, developer of the Batman Arkham series? They all have the potential to be present here. A new demo for Cyberpunk 2077 is also pretty much a certainty. The cherry on top is looking to be delivered by From Software. Talks about an open world game involving the help of Game of Thrones creator George R. R. Martin have been flying around for a little while now. Last year, Microsoft was given the permission to reveal Sekiro Shadows Die twice, making it all the more believable that we will be hearing about it here. All things considered, Microsoft's E3 showcase is the one to look out to, no matter if you're an Xbox fan or play games on other platforms. I for one would say it's by far my most anticipated show, and I cannot wait to see what they'll bring to the table. Now, when it comes to third-party presentations, in typical fashion, the number of surprises should be much more limited. The vast majority of content to be shown we're already familiar with right now. Following Microsoft's conference is that of Bethesda. Bethesda desperately wants to be seen as one of the big boys, which is why it continues the annual tradition of hosting an E3 conference. Honestly though, this year I can't help but think why the hell are they even doing so? Coming off of the disaster that was Fallout 76, Bethesda's PR team could certainly use a morale boost. 
The problem is that the games just aren't there. Both The Elder Scrolls 6 as well as Starfield, the big new IP revealed last E3, have been confirmed not to be part of the show. Bethesda Game Studios was hit with a major reality check, now that even their most diehard fans have come to the conclusion that their engine is vastly outdated at this point in time. If they want The Elder Scrolls to maintain its legendary status, if they want Starfield to lay the foundation for a future household series, Bethesda is required to take a step back and revisit the drawing board. This decision I fully respect, understand and support. The point is, what remains is just not enough to warrant the press conference in two weeks. We'll see gameplay for Doom Eternal, the sequel anticipated since 2016. Everyone I know loves its smooth gameplay, so to say that Doom Eternal will be great is a safe bet. There's also Wolfenstein Youngblood, the feminazi spin-off, pardon the joke, to a series praised by many but that I could personally never get into, and there is DLC for The Elder Scrolls Online and Rage 2. The latter I just played for a few days, but I've come to accept that I'll probably never touch it again. Don't get me wrong, fans of all these franchises will be happy to hear that extra content is coming, but to say that I am personally excited for the Bethesda showcase would be a hyperbole. A company whose presentation I do look forward to slightly more is Ubisoft. Sadly, one of their biggest surprises has already been given away in Ghost Recon Breakpoint. I liked what I saw, simultaneously it doesn't do anything new, which has also been my main gripe with Ubisoft for about a decade now. Innovation is usually far to be found. Each of their IPs, from Assassin's Creed to Far Cry and from Ghost Recon to The Division, largely share the same framework. The good news is, most of these franchises are taking a break this time, hopefully leaving room for some new ideas. A great example is Beyond Good and Evil 2. Although I reserve judgement regarding its open universe approach, the vibe I get is that this really is a passion project for Ubisoft Montpellier, a studio that has had a special place in my heart since playing Rayman Legends. The world is unique, you can fly wherever you want, so now it's just a matter of finding out if the game can manage to appeal to me on a personal level. And then there's Skull and Bones, the Assassin's Creed inspired ship combat game that for some reason keeps getting delayed. The reason why might be that during the initial reveal I felt I was looking at a carbon copy, though I do have to say as time goes on Skull and Bones seems to find a more unique own identity. There is one more game that appears to be a guarantee for the show and that is Watch Dogs 3. New information surfaced last week and combined with what we already heard before, I'd feel safe to bet my money on the near future London setting and the fall 2019 release indeed. Watch Dogs never really escaped what many saw as a disappointing start, but I myself enjoyed both the first and second game more than I'd like to admit. Add to that the promise of apparently being able to skateboard your way around and you already know that I'm sold. These four games will form the core part of the show. While everybody's shouting for a new Splinter Cell, Ubisoft seems keen on continuing to ignore the calls, despite the occasional tease here and there. Throw in the usual Just Dance, an update on the still very popular Rainbow Six Siege, and another possible quirky VR project, and it should just about sum up the presentation as a whole. Still, in Ubisoft tradition, I do hope for that one more real surprise at the end. That is pretty much it as far as actual press conferences go, and you'll forgive me for not bothering with the PC gaming show. What remains are the two directs. I say two because not only is Nintendo present with the usual live streamed video, Square Enix is the one you could easily forget about. Now that the Final Fantasy VII Remake finally gave us a new trailer in the latest state of play, the development trajectory seems to have reached a far enough state to slowly work towards launch. We know that it's going to be episodic, adding more reason to believe that the first episode will be out relatively soon. Therefore, expect another trailer, otherwise I honestly wouldn't know why this event even exists. Because that's the thing, leave aside the DLC for existing games and not a single new Square Enix project has so far been revealed. All we know is that there are two more in the works, one of them being the long-awaited Avengers game that is going to be huge. It's worked on by Crystal Dynamics, former developer of the reboot Tomb Raiders, ever since finishing Rise in 2015. The other is a first-person shooter by People Can Fly, known for Bulletstorm and Gears of War Judgment. Now, last year, Square Enix's video consisted of little more than repeated trailers, for example for Kingdom Hearts 3, which had already been shown prior at Microsoft. Going by this, I can totally see both of these new games appearing on Xbox's stage first, simply to receive some additional information yet again in this separate showcase. 
Last but not least is Nintendo. The Switch continues to be successful, and Nintendo looks to continue providing support with a steady release of content. Many months ago we would have thought that Metroid Prime 4 would be the main focus here, but now that we know its development was restarted, even asking for a new JPEG logo would probably be asking too much. Thankfully there is lots to keep fans busy in the meantime. June and July will be packed, from Super Mario Maker 2 to Dragon Quest Builders, Fire Emblem and a pixel art style Stranger Things title. Other 2019 releases include Luigi's Mansion 3, Pokemon Sword and Shield and Astral Chain, the latter of which being made by Platinum and standing out to me the most. Unknown is whether Bayonetta 3 shall be available, beyond a doubt one of the Switch's most anticipated upcoming games, but secretly pushed from its 2019 release year to a to be announced status. Nintendo has already said that it won't be showing off any new hardware at E3, so what we'll end up with is probably a random selection of the gigantic pile of content they can pick from. With everything covered, the million dollar question that remains is what is Sony gonna be up to? For the first time in history, PlayStation is skipping E3 and we can all see why. The PS5 is scheduled for 2020 and the exclusive PS4 games that are left we've already seen at E3 multiple times. There simply wouldn't be many surprises left. Then again, what about Death Stranding, what about The Last of Us Part 2, and what about Ghost of Tsushima? Spin it however you like, they are all highly anticipated titles and they haven't had an update in a full year now. Well, despite the lack of an E3 conference, the traditional days of play week with several PlayStation promotions and discounts that usually takes place right after is still happening. With the new state of play format, Sony has a chance to draw attention towards itself once E3 is all set and done. We know Kojima has been heavily teasing a new trailer for Death Stranding and he wouldn't do so if its release wasn't close. We know Naughty Dog has finished mocap on The Last of Us Part 2, so the game should definitely have reached its final stage of development. If you'd ask me, Sony is not staying quiet for much longer. Either via state of play or via individually released trailers, we will soon be getting an extensive look at each of the big three games and with a bit of luck, concrete release windows included. But as I once again glance at what we can expect, I realize I shouldn't be painting a rosy picture for the sake of it. For the first time, it's gonna be a strange feeling watching E3 together with you all. I'm excited for the official kickoff of the next generation by Microsoft. I truly hope we'll see them make a comeback with story-driven and action-adventure games that I can really look forward to. I'm eager to see the other publishers show off gameplay demos and announce a few new titles that I hopefully hadn't seen coming. But at the same time, in the back of my head I'll be aware of that large, unmissable void. That empty space not only left behind by two major publishers, but by companies that can't tell us yet what is planned next. E3 2019 is merely a foretaste, symbolizing the end of a generation in which most game companies are simply crossing off the last items on their list so they can start over very soon. That time is right around the corner and it's gonna be spectacular. Just a little more patience left.